Okay, today we're going to talk about the very, very basics of nuclear chemistry equations, and it looks sort of intimidating sometimes, but it turns out that once you know some of the basic terminology, that the math itself uh, behind this, behind the, uh, the simplest part, the inductory stuff, is literally elementary school level. So that's, that's some very good news. So just starting out here with the very first part, radioactivity. Um, what is radioactivity? Well, it's defined a number of different ways, but usually it revolves around something having to do with the spontaneous emission of particles or rays from the unstable nuclei of certain elements. So you've got little pieces of the atom that basically are just flying out of the nucleus. Now the term radioactivity was, was coined by Marie Curie, who, working with her husband, um, came up with the characterizing some of the most fundamental parts of some of the things that we're going to talk about uh, today. Uh, in this picture, sometimes I will show to students and ask them, you know, can you tell me which of these people got a Nobel Prize in chemistry? And most people, if they know who Marie Curie is at all, they'll know it's her. Other people will know that, that her husband uh, received a Nobel Prize in chemistry. A lot fewer people will know that in the middle, their little girl, about 30 years after that picture was taken, she also received a Nobel Prize in chemistry. And then, of course, her mom, Marie Curie, uh, had one in physics as well. Anyway, just fun little historical fact. So what is it that makes some elements radioactive and some not? It says uh, in the definition, uh, emission of particles raised from the unstable nuclei of certain elements. What is it that makes some elements radioactive and others not? Well, it turns out that takes a couple of steps, but it's actually fairly easy. So let's dive into that real quick. It has to do with protons and neutrons, and probably most people already know what a proton and a neutron is. Um, it turns out that an element is identified by its number of protons. So as a way of saying this, I use this as an example usually, uh, there's one and only one element in the entire universe with six protons, and that element is carbon. There's one and only one element in the entire universe with 17 protons, and that element is chlorine. So it's pretty simple. If it has six protons, it's carbon. If it has 17 protons, it's chlorine. And each one has a unique number of, of uh, protons. Now, within the elements themselves, there are isotopes of different elements, of, of uh, the different forms of the same element. Uh, they've got the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. Uh, that's a very important definition. So, for example here, I've got a carbon-12 nucleus that's labeled. Carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons, but carbon-14 has six protons and eight neutrons. And it turns out that it's the ratio of those neutrons to protons that determines whether an isotope is radioactive. Now, the ratio is a little bit too detailed to get into right here and right now, but it's enough to give you a for instance here that, for instance, carbon-14 is radioactive, whereas carbon-12 is not. And that comes in really handy uh, with some other stuff we're going to talk about later. All right, we need to know how we work with our symbols in some of these equations. Again, the equations are really easy, but we need to make sure and not get our symbols mixed up, especially when we're talking about things like atomic number and atomic mass, things that sound alike. So as an example, we're going to show the numbers uh, for carbon-14. So this bottom number, as it says, is, is the atomic number. That's the number of protons. And as I said a minute ago, that's unique to each atom and it identif identifies the atom. Uh, the, the top number is the mass number, and that is the number of protons and neutrons together. All right, and you probably would not be too terribly surprised, you know, if I said that sometimes people will mix up the atomic number and the mass number if they're doing a calculation. Uh, they'll, you know, they need to calculate the atomic number and instead they calculate the mass number and write the wrong answer down. So you just need to be careful with things like that. Okay, so once we got that, uh, sim you know, symbols, once we got the symbols and everything down, I want to show you the three different types of nuclear radiation because we are going to use uh, those in doing our calculations. You'll see in a second. There's three types. The weakest type, the least dangerous type of radioactivity is alpha radiation. And all that is is a helium nucleus. Uh, and again, they're fair it's fairly weak. It can be stopped by a piece of paper. It's not like in the movies where, you know, it will zap through anything. 
uh, some forms of radioactivity, not all of them, but some like this, are really not all that uh, dangerous as far as being able to go through stuff. All right, there's also beta. Uh, I've worked with that a lot. Uh, it's basically just a high-speed electron that gets kicked out of the nucleus. Uh, it's a little bit more penetrating than alpha. Uh, it is, uh, it says it'll go through paper, but uh, by thin pieces of wood. But another little thing about it is they come from inside the nucleus through a neutron breaking down into a proton, which stays in the nucleus, obviously, and then the electron, which gets, gets kicked out. So you've got something neutral breaking into two parts of, of that's something positive and then something negative. And uh, so when the nucleus gets too many neutrons, that's how it deals with it. That's how it gets a fewer uh, number of neutrons. And then the last is gamma. Gamma is the one where it's the best news to see on paper because you don't have to do anything with it. It doesn't have any mass and it doesn't have any charge. And um, it is really great to deal with on paper. But if in person, though, if you're actually working in a lab, it is something that you really have to be very, very aware of because it, it is very penetrating. Uh, you have to have all sorts of protective measures dealing with it. Uh, sometimes you really can't get around working with it. Sometimes you have to, but uh, it is something you have to be very conscientious about in person. But hey, on a test, it's really good news. You don't have any math to do. Okay, so uh, we're going to do an example of a uh, type of nuclear decay. We have a uranium-238 uh, atom sitting here, the symbol for one. The uranium-238 is the most common form of uranium. It's not the bomb type of uranium that they would use to make a, an atomic bomb with, but it is still radioactive though. So uranium breaks down, and it turns out that uranium is what is called an alpha emitter. It will emit an alpha particle. So there's our alpha particle that it emits. And the type of question that you might have on just about any standardized test you would take in this area would be something like this. What does it form? What element does it form when it emits an alpha particle? And that turns out to be the really, really easy part once you make sure that you knew all the, know the, all the other stuff. Because the mathematical question, the complex mathematical question that you're asking yourself is, what plus 2 is 92? That is literally it. What plus 2 is 92? And of course, that's easy enough to figure out. Um, and you'll remember from a minute ago that the number on the bottom, that's the atomic number. It's the number of protons, so 90 protons. So we, of course, realize that there's only going to be one element in the whole universe that has 90 protons. You may or may not have that memorized, more than likely not, which is why we invented, why the uh, periodic table was invented. So you just search around and look around and look down, and it turns out that down there, that is thorium, which has 90 protons. This is obviously a simplified version of a periodic table, so I could make it bigger and everything still be legible. All right, so now that we have our number, we can put our symbol in, and then we can send that away. And now we look up at the top, because you know that there's going to be more than one isotope of thorium. Uh, there is, whether you know it or not. But again, we've got the same type of complex mathematical problem. What plus 4 is 238? All right, and probably, you know, we won't need a calculator for that. Uh, it's going to be 234. So now we know that not only is it thorium, but the isotope of thorium that it is, is thorium-234. And we can uh, set up and do another one, try another one. Uh, this is radon-222, and it also breaks down to form an alpha particle. And this will essentially be the same sort of drill that we just got through doing. Um, we are asking ourselves, what plus 2 is 86? Right? And of course, we know that's 84, and most of us don't have the entire periodic table memorized, so we, we make use of that. We look around, and then we find out that uh, it is polonium. Right? So again, we can write our symbol in. We send the little line away there. And then again, we have to go through the complex mathematical process of saying, what plus 4 is 222? Right? What plus 4 is 222? That's obviously 218. So not only do we know that it's polonium, we, uh, we know that it's polonium-218. Um, and again, you know, these are both alpha emitters. We want to also talk about beta particles, beta emitters. And beta emitters are a little bit different um, in that you have to keep a couple of things in mind to, make, uh, to avoid making a simple uh, mistake. Whereas alpha emitters just have protons and neutrons being kicked out, a little bit more complex stuff is going on. 
uh, with the with the beta particles. So we'll have a neutron. If the neutron to proton ratio is not just right and wants to get rid of some of the neutrons, and it does so by the neutrons decomposing into protons and then uh, the beta particle and electron. All right, and the proton stays where it is, and then the electron gets kicked out. And there's something we're going to talk about a little bit later where we really need to keep that in mind uh, of what's going on. So anyway, that's what's happening uh, kind of in the background in the nucleus. So again, just to summarize, since I kind of broke that equation up into parts when I was doing the animation, neutron breaks down into a proton and an electron. You can see the charges uh, stay the same, plus one and minus one and zero, and you can see the masses are also the same. That's actually not exactly zero, but it's so infinitesimal compared to the mass of a proton, we, we can count it as zero. Anyway, uh, so an example type of problem, uh, complete with a common type of approach that may or may not be right, is this. Sulfur 35, which I've worked with a whole bunch. Sulfur 35 will break down and uh, it will kick out a beta particle. One of the neutrons inside of it will break down and it'll kick out a beta particle, a high speed electron. All right. Now, a real common approach on this is saying, is looking at the equation and saying, okay, 16 minus 1 is 15. And then we look up what element we're talking about with 15. Of course, that's, that's phosphorus. So now that we know that uh, symbol, we can write it down. The little line goes away. And the math here is even less complex. What plus 0 is 35? That's 35. So we say it's, well, it's phosphorus 35. Now, the only problem with that is a very common approach. The only problem with it is that it's wrong. Um, if you'll notice over here, 15 minus 1 is not the same as 16. The mass is not the same on both sides. You always have to stop at the end, especially if you're dealing with uh, beta emitters, to make sure that your mass is equal, uh, equal up. All right? So what, what, what the, the correct approach is this. Uh, sulfur 35 breaks down and does in fact form a beta particle and again the type of question that you get on an exam would be you know uh, what you know what does it form so the way to ask this is what minus 1 is 16 just like you did on the early ones what minus 1 is 16 obviously that's 17 we go and we check our periodic table element number 17 with 17 protons is chlorine so we can write our symbol in the little line goes away and up here again we've got even uh, math that's even more simple than before. What plus zero is 35? That's uh, 35, obviously. So the answer here is going to be chlorine 35. You just have to be really careful sometimes with uh, beta emitters just because that, that minus one will throw people sometimes. It's not quite as straightforward. It's something that if you're just careful on it, you know, you'll get it, you'll get it right. All right. Uh, another, beta emitter is another beta emitter is carbon 14. And again, we go through just the same little exercise here just to kind of get a little bit of practice, uh, you know, predicting what it breaks down into. All right. So we ask ourselves not six minus one, but we ask ourselves what minus one is six. And obviously that's seven. We go and look at our periodic table. Element number seven is nitrogen. So we can write our symbol in. And then what plus zero is 14 is obviously 14. And so we know that we not only have nitrogen, but we have nitrogen 14. So that's just another example of a, of a beta emitter. All right. Uh, let's look at this example and we'll be able to see uh, what's going on here. So this is thorium 230 and it breaks down into an alpha particle and we need to figure out what other elements go in there. So what plus two is uh, 90 and that's going to be 88. And then we look at the periodic table again. We have to look around for our element number 88. That's radium. And then we want to find out what isotope of radium. So we say what plus 4 is 230. And that's obviously 226. So we've got radium 226 here. Now something unexpected here that you wouldn't be able to predict, at least not with what we've gone over so far, is the presence of a gamma ray, uh, you know, ga gamma radiation. Uh, and because of the fact that gamma has no mass and it has no charge it does not affect the math at all in any of this so I just want to make sure everybody keeps that in mind it's actually good news it's less work you have to do and that's it